Here we told Rosh Hashanah, de Rosh Hashanah determines the destiny of our lives. And God will determine who will live and who will die and all the, whether we will, we will be very successful, we'll be less successful. The destiny of our lives. And we're told that our good deeds, our mitzvot, and our compassion and our kindness will bring kindness and compassion in return. So, of course, the big question is, you know, does that really happen? Or in the words of Job, why is it then that good people suffer? Why do bad things happen to good people? And why do good things happen to bad people? You know, it really undermines the whole premise and the whole thesis of uh, these high holidays that good deeds are rewarded. And that's what we tell ourselves. We tell our children. And uh, so I'm just adding a bit more. So, of course, this touches upon the million dollar or the billion dollar question of good and evil, of right and wrong. So let me say this. We don't understand the mysteries of God's ways. Oh, listen, I mentioned the Holocaust. Why do six million innocent Jews have to be massacred in such a way? One and a half million children. What did they do wrong? I don't have an answer. I don't think anyone has an answer. I think actually if anyone tried to answer, that itself would be obscene. We don't have an answer for that. It's the mysteries. Will we ever have an answer? I don't know. But it's interesting in Judaism, we've suffered greatly and we have many questions. But what Jews were always wise about was that their ultimate question was not why, but what are we going to do about it? I remember asking Eli Wiesel, he was a good friend of my father's and I maintained the relationship. I said to him, is it true that when the Jews marched to the gas chambers, war marched, I should say, that some of them sang the song Ani Maimon, I believe with complete faith in the coming of the Messiah. So he said, well, we were not near the bar the barracks were not near the, cha the gas chambers because they wanted to keep us so-called, you know, keep us in the dark. But we knew what was going on. But in the barracks all the time, that song, prayers, Kaddish, Mauda'ani, Shema, constantly you heard it all the time. So I said, with respect, you know, I'm a, just an American kid born in freedom. But I want to understand, isn't that like somewhat insane? The Jews are being led to the massacre in the worst possible way. They had all the right to be angry at God. And instead, they're singing his praises and hoping Mashiach. I mean, this was like the darkest moment in history. And I remember what he responded to me, and I heard it from many other Holocaust survivors. You know what he said? He said, you have to understand, it wasn't a cry of desperation, of denial, of... Um, of, uh, of fantasy. You know, it wasn't escapism. It was the Jews declaring that you may take our bodies, but you can't take our souls. You may take our lives, but you can't take our faith. And if it won't be us, it will be our children. We will prevail, because that's our story. From the time of Egypt, the Egyptian slavery, all the way through the Babylonians and the Assyrians and the Greeks and the Romans and the Ottomans and the Spanish, we will make it through. In other words, we don't really know why it doesn't always work the way we would like. So I bring it back to this question. I want to personalize. It. I don't want to just keep it philosophical. It's a very big question. Of course. Someone will say, I'm praying on Rosh Hashanah for a good year. I'm trying to be the best. And then something happens that it doesn't seem to work out that way. And many people also come away with this attitude I mentioned before that God is going to punish us and God is, God is waiting to, to be punitive you did something wrong. I mean, that always bothered me. Why would God do that? He created flawed human beings. So the answer is the opposite. Rosh Hashanah teaches us that you are here because God wants you here, because he loves you. But life and death has a mystery to it. And that mystery is something we can't always fathom. So I would say briefly on a topic like this, which really deserves its own uh, session, and maybe Mark, that should be the next one about this big topic. I will just say, that the bottom line is that it should not in any way perturb us because this is one of the big questions of life. But at the same time, we are here and we continuously maintain the confidence. We are not going to give up just because it doesn't always work out. That we don't always get the prayer we want answered. That doesn't mean we give up. It means we forge ahead and we hope absolutely and believe in goodness 
and we commit it to goodness no matter how it works out. We always believe that it will work out well, but if it doesn't work out exactly as we planned it, that does not stop us from being committed to what we believe in. And that's a sign of human dignity. It's a sign of human strength. That's not a sign of weakness. It's on the contrary. So I say to you, Hillary, you asked the question. Anyone else has this question? We all have the same question. I'm not going to suggest that uh, I, I have a quick answer, but I do know that we have to look at these days as days of confidence in us and that we will do what we have to do. And look, after the Holocaust, the state of Israel was born. There's a renaissance of Jewish life in Israel and abroad, unprecedented. No one could have imagined it. I'm not justifying what happened, but we see Jews forged ahead, rebuilt, and look what we have today. We have our challenges, but no one can say everyone wrote obituaries on the Jewish people um, 80 years ago after World War II. But we're here. Look, we're here together here, celebrating, ready to enter Rosh Hashanah. And we believe firmly that we will carry the baton to the finish line. And as the Jews prayed and sang that, yes, there will be redemption, that will put personal and global redemption, because we never give up on that hope and on the belief, absolute belief in what is good and that goodness will ultimately prevail and ultimately vanquish any evil or darkness.